So today we've come to Kennels Farm. We're in Shropshire. We're in the Shropshire uh, Cheshire border here with Johnny and Ben Charmley. So you're farming here, I suppose, in conjunction with your father, Richard? Yes, we've been here since 96 now. My dad came here on a, one of the earliest FBTs issued in, at the time. And then we sort of worked with a private landlord next door. Slowly got hold of another 120 acres. And then five or six years ago, uh, a large farm on the same estate we're on now come available and we worked closely with the estate and managed to get hold of that and that was close to 400 acres that come onto here in one block so it's grown and we have another 120 acres up the road for silage keep and, and young stock rearing and so we've just been lucky to be able to grow to a quite a large scale to where we are today yeah yeah so how many cows are you making today johnny uh 500 cows at the minute they uh, are producing 6,200 litres a year with about 540 kilos of milk solids. Um, yeah, it's probably more it's traditional like Irish Holstein, more like cows crossing Ireland with mm. obviously into Jersey, 15 round percent still in the herd. Um, yeah, very high. Well, still good, good solids, but good litres as well. And, yeah. And obviously that's produced like 95% of grass based diet grown on farm here. And I suppose maybe if I could say our connection with Grass Tech and the farm here, I suppose I came here maybe 20 years ago first. Would have started making a map of the farm here when it was yeah. maybe 100, 120 acres. And I guess our involvement with you has been with maybe through livestock as well. That's um, it. Maybe. Buying some livestock through us or whatever. So When we took on this extra 400 acres in 2018, we had a lot off you then. Mm -hmm. We had a lot off you back in 2011, 2012, I think, when we took on the other initial 120 acres. On both large, when we've expanded a lot, and then gone out to Ireland and bought. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go and maybe have a look at the coast and see um, what the money's made. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. It's, so Ben, it's uh, the cow type here. We're looking at a mix, are we? A mix. Historically, we were a high-index Holstein, high-yielding herd. So, oh, 07, 08, the, the entire herd was crossed to Jersey, and we carried on Jersey, 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 Jersey. And then eventually we felt we'd had enough Jersey influence in the herd and we've gone back to a more Frisian-y type now. So we've got a more saleable calf and long story short, we're a bit restricted on parlour size and number of cubicles here and not a great opportunity out winter. So we might as well have a slightly bigger, more productive cow per space in the parlour and per space in the cubicles because that's one of our limiting factors. And we're not as limited on acres, but we're, we're pretty happy with this cow type now. I don't want to completely lose my jersey influence from within the herd. Yeah. Yeah, they're um, not a small cow. Sorry. They're not a small cow. No, they're not a small yeah. cow. No, yeah. no. But I'm limited to, I think I can winter about 5.15 here. Or I've got to take buildings on up the road or start out wintering on exceptionally heavy land, which I don't, I don't really fancy doing. We've only really got a block of 50 acres that's out winterable on. Um, the rest of it's exceptionally heavy. They disappear up to the knees in the, in the okay. winter months. So we're here now in the first week of June. Um, where are we at relative to breeding, say? We are coming up to week six. I looked this morning, the non-return rate is looking at 73%, which is looking exceptional. There might be another glut of returns to come. We were 68% last year on first round of service. So we do, we pretty much do four weeks of dairy which is producing as a massive surplus of heifers on that, really. We only need to do two and a half, three, but that, that's to, to build stock numbers to, to grow the business with, to, another, to another farm, hopefully. Um, we're just doing a week of Belgian blue now to finish off to six weeks. And then once we get into that third round, we'll, we'll throw the bulls in then. Um, we were tempted to throw the bulls in this week, but we thought we'd just finish off those higher numbers of days of, where there's, where there's more per day bulling. So the bulls have got an easy time when they go in. They'll, they'll be Angus bulls sweeping then again. So we've got a bit of value in the calf. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, your breeding management then, are you doing so it's tail paint I see anyway? Tail paint. Um, there's a wealth of management between me and my brothers to spot bullers. So we've not got to, uh, it's not like I'm on every day. He'll do one day and I'll do the other day. Um, Heat detection systems are out there. I, I don't think we need to improve our fertility with an automated system. We're, we're right up there with the six-week in-car rates and the empty rates. So yeah. we're, we're happy at the minute on tail painting. We want to 
retain cash in the business and not shell it out on expensive technology at this moment. We have got an automated seg gate, which makes life a lot easier. Yeah. At least it's just a case of punching the cows in and out they come. Um, but yeah, we're still on tail paint. Um, not a massive amount of intervention, but we do. Anything that's not seen bulling will be seen by the vet. And if she's completely quiet, a seed is put in. And if she's, you know, cycling but not showing heat, we'll just do an, an off-sync programme then. But I think we've intervened on about 13. 13% of the total have been intervened and all the rest have come on naturally. OK. Uh, so just as an example here, we have a Frisian cow here and you have a crossbred beside her. Say, if they had come on in the first three weeks, what would you have put them in calf to either cow? We keep it pretty simple. My brother does... I don't know much about what bulls we use. You'd ask to ask him, but we have a team of four bulls. And it's very simple, it's bull of the day. Johnny, would you pick a specific bull for each of them or would you just... No, no? I try and keep continuity. Yeah. Like each year I buy a team of four bulls, um, usually similar bloodlines. Sometimes the brothers, you know what I mean? You can't always get that. And I will try and use most bulls for two years as well. Um, we used to have like Jersey bull and we had some of the taller cows and you put that on it. But we got to a level where the herd is quite consistent all the way through. Um, yeah, and we go with that. Right. It, it, whatever we do, it's it's got to be simplistic. Yeah. I don't want to go down this road of, of ten different bulls to use and and all the sex semen on this cow and not on this <laughs> cow. It, it, there's enough pressure that time of year. It is just catching those cows bulling and making sure the silage is made and, and the the high volumes of milk go in the tank and we're not losing milk because the cows are underfed. Yeah. I, I just want to keep those basics simple. So we've got a nice replicable system yeah. that, that, that I can train a member of staff in to, to do and yeah. all the rest of it, yeah. yeah. We're, we're all conventional semen. Um, I don't, and I'm a real fertility purist. I'm sure, I'm sure there's not a lot wrong with sex semen, but there is still a small compromise. Yes. As anyone will tell you, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but we don't. We're not willing to compromise that. We really do want to stay pure to the to for a high fertility herd. Okay. So we've we've been in a dry period at the moment. What's your grassland management like, or what's your grass supply like? So very very unusual time of year for it to dry up. Normally it's we are overrun with grass this time of year. Um, so we were because we've got quite a large platform and some silage ground we can branch out onto. We can go on to a real fast 15, 16 day round through May. And then I cut very, very aggressively when we first cut and took a lot of paddocks out. They're all, this is what we're in today, what's come back, it's 22, 23 days, not a lot, great deal come back. And then it just hasn't rained for a month, so we're now into deficit management. So we're now feeding three kilo. Uh, and I'm having I'll to take, I'll I've, concentrate. I've, that's fresh way to concentrate, yeah. yeah. And then I'm having to put just shy of two kilo of bales in just to, to fill them up. But they are bales that we took a surplus earlier in the month. So we just feed them back. Um, those paddocks that we baled, they wouldn't have kept. They would have just gone to head. So mm. in that situation, they're almost better just being baled and fed back. I'm hoping those bales will last me till it rains because I'd, I'd rather not empty, open up my first cut clamp. Yeah, okay. So how many bales a day? Um, they're having about six bales between yeah. 500. Um, so yeah. you're 500 in a group here? Just shy of now. A few have been called. There's a, there's a small once a day group of four or five lame cows at the farm or okay. one the mastitis, yeah. So when you're letting the cows out after milking or are you giving them enough for two milkings, three milkings or enough for one milking? One milking. So here there's two blocks of ground that involve crossing a roadway or a driveway. So they're day round paddocks. So we do all the road crossings in the day and then the night at night then because we travel up to a mile from the parlour at the night, which is quite a long way to go and fetch them in the morning. So all the night paddocks are on gate timerable paddocks. So when we get here at five in the morning, they're already there at the collecting yard. So it negates that having to get up half an hour early to go and fetch cows in. But to do that, you must remain on 12 hour breaks. Because obviously, as you know, if you put them in a 24 hour break, the chances of them coming out on a gate time are slim because they're just stuffed full. Yeah. But I'd like to think it, it, it does create more decisions for me on 12 hour system. But I'd like to think quite often they're not, they're very rarely underfed, you know. Um, they're very content here anyway now at the moment and we're not too far from milking. Yeah, I'm quite glad they're not all bellowing at us yeah. today. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they're not too far away today. But that's the system we run here. Um, 
just with the amount of acres we have to walk to. The, the parlour is not central to the farm. So grazing platform wise and, and stocking rate, what is, what is it? What, what, what can you access here grazing wise? And... We are at about three, just over three, about three to the hectare. I think when I get all the acres in, I can maybe get down to 2.8. But some of those acres you can only get to in the summer months. Um, in the back end from September, we have to implement some of the lower yielders on once a day and make them walk the distance just to take the pressure off the rest. Um, but yeah, here, here there's about 500 acres in one block that's, that, that I can get to with, with milkers, I think. Don't quote me on that there, thereabouts. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's, so we did try 10 in seven a bit last year. It, 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 it was means to an end. Um, it didn't work too great for us. Staggering milkings with relief staff that want to work to a regimented time. And it worked well on the lower yielders, but some of the higher yielders probably dropped a bit more savagely on that 10 and 7. But we were feeding so much silage, it was in the last year's dry period, it was easier to keep them in one group. Um, but we'll probably implement, because we run two in the parlour, so it's quite handy then in September you can the afternoon milk and you can drop down to one man because there's less mm. less to milk. Mm. Okay, so what time will the cows go in here for milking out today? They'll go in at twenty two quarter to three. We will set start time to make to so we finish at quarter past five, no later. So if it means we have to start earlier then we start earlier. Yeah. If it means we start later, we always time it so yeah. All people and staff are off the farm by between five and quarter past five thirty at the latest. Right. Um, and, and in the morning then? You're at peak we start at five. Make cups We'd, on for five? Cups well they get there at five, so yeah. they usually have cups on for five past because the cows are already there and okay. time of yeah. we we're, we're about to go to half past five now, as we've just dropped a couple of litres off the peak now, milking time get yeah. a bit faster. Okay. So you were you were saying you were you're doing twenty six litres at the moment? 26 two kilos of milk solids, but I've got a feeling we'll lose a bit of that now. I, I'm looking at my past records. You, you, we'll just struggle to hold it now. We'll probably end up 25, 1.9, something like that. Okay. I tend to lose the first three litres, 0.2 of a kilo of milk solids, reasonably quickly. Most people are obviously agree from peak, and then it, then it very slowly peters off through the summer then. Yeah. What do you think it's achievable, or what, what's your ambition is for the herd? Or Here... I, f I think these cows, they've, they've got 30 litres, 2.4 kilos of milk solids in them, off, off 1.25 kilos of cake. But we need to cull out to do that and then let the herd mature. Because mm. at the minute we're still a high replacement rate, you know. Uh, like there's 28 we didn't serve this year. Um, just for, and some of them look perfectly good cows, but if they've, if they've been tested positive for yonis, there's only a few of those 28 that are yonis. We will not serve them now. We just let them drop out the herd. And call them at the end? And call them at the end, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, or whenever feed supply dictates, call them. So you're breeding then. Where are your bulls coming from? Uh, mainly Ireland, New Zealand. Hmm. Um, it's been a mixture. Um, yeah, when we're mainly when we're mainly picking bulls, we make sure it's 300 plus EDI or in the breeding worth like the 250 pluses. And um, on the EDI, I'm always looking like for 30 kg plus of fat and protein positive. And before that, I'll always make sure the highest fertility bull, no matter what, before I even look at anything else. Um, and then we sort of go on a slight bit of positive milk. I don't like buying minus. 100, 200 kg milk bulls we still have an element litres here yeah. on this farm um, maybe different elsewhere um, yeah and then use a team of usually four bulls for the herd and one and a proven bull for the heifers um, sort of had a big thing I don't know when we go and look up the heifers later on um, about keeping first lactation cows and obviously it leads on from the synchronised programme and obviously getting that longevity in there and well reduce your depreciation like in your herd. <laughs> um, yeah and it's been working real well recently. Are you using proven bulls for the cows no, or are you using some genomics the, as well? Genomics for all the cows but then just a proven bull for the heifers. Right. We must have just had a bad run with one or two bulls we used on the heifers and then the synchro works that well here. Um, 70% half hold on that sort of car pretty fast, so we want that proven proven ball to do what he says on the tin. And it's also 
where we didn't use a proven ball one year, we had quite a lot of difficult carvings, and that knocks on to your first lactation and cow. Key, key those heifers carved down easy. She struggles all year in the, after a difficult carving, gets knocked about, and then you end up losing it. Um, okay. Yeah, we never actually get to what you just mentioned before, you know what I mean, the longevity and getting there, isn't it? So, but no, that's been going real well the last couple of years. So. And your reason for using genomics on your cows is it taking a faster progression or? Uh, slightly faster as you get progression, but no offence from Ireland, because <laughs> uh, I used to work at a placement year for a seeding company. Um, they seem to chop the heads off the bulls quite fast over mm. proven bulls. So mm. You get a good proven bull and he's gone. <laughs> Where yeah. New Zealand, they seem to keep them longer, isn't it? They're, they're more, well, they put more of the money on the proven bull, isn't it? Mm. Um, obviously, genomics is working, it's good enough for us. Um, well, what yeah. were the bulls we used? We used Candy and Anton at the genomic level, didn't we? Yeah, Candy and Anton. And they're um, now very good proven Yeah, and proven they've come through so. a while. I think if you open any scene in catalogue, they've got size of Candy and, Candy and Anton now, isn't it? I think that... Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what we used this year. Well, this year we used three Irish bulls and one New Zealand and then a New Zealand bull on the heifers. Um, yeah, all easy car well, the heifer's always had the easiest carving ball we can find and then the herd we don't really struggle with carving in the herd as well, isn't it? So, <coughs> so Johnny, what are we looking at here? Uh, there's uh, 133 heifers in here. These would have been all born not last January, the previous, isn't it? Was that 2021, 25th of Jan. And in the age range of these, because the synchro and the herd so tight. Yeah, probably a maximum of 16 days, like they're all born in the first two, maybe a couple in the third week. Because one of the big problems we had years ago, um, obviously we used to just use all bulls or do natural service, and we had calves born over the whole eight weeks, and we could never get them to bullet weight, and obviously it was impacting through into the herd, like I was saying. So now, because the, the breeding's a lot better in the herd, but the breeding's helped in the herd by having the front loaded in the calf and it's like hand in hand. Even size now. Yeah. And again, well, usually for the heifers, they're served all to one proven bull. Usually New Zealand, just the way it is. Okay. Um, and in terms of um, sire usage, obviously, they'll get a very high breeding worth bull with the best fertility you can find with usually like 80 to 90 kilos plus of fat and protein. Mm -hmm. And the bulls we use are usually one part jersey just on the heifers to keep that carbon difficulty low. Um, yeah, and I think there's currently 12 Angus bulls running in here. Um, so we, I listened to a podcast on um, Chargers, isn't it, with beef bulls serving like a maximum of three cows a day. Right. Because the Three's biggest, two, we did it last year, we did the synchronised programme and then obviously we thought, oh, we can serve all the returns in three weeks. And on the returns, we got like 20, 20 bulling and oh, the amount of hassle of getting this size mob down to the main farm, sorting out and bulling it just for them 20 wasn't, what, wasn't it. worth it. So yeah. that's why we got in with the bull power, because there is the risk they can all come bulling on one or two days on that it's return, isn't there? Covering that return window of the synchro, even though we're getting 70% hold, you're still getting 30% coming back bulling in a four day period. So you need a large amount of bull power to cover it. And like, like he says, Getting, getting this lot in every day to serve on naturals on returns, is, it's challenging enough. Yeah. They're not as well behaved as cows. Because yeah, you're serving your herd by that time as well, because the, the heifers generally carve on the 25th of um, January here and the herd starts on the 1st of February. Um, so yeah, when you're in the return window, you're, you're in first gut silage. Your yeah, cows are nine. coming in as well. Um, yeah, it's a lot of work yep. just for a small return. Your bulls are not that tall, are they a year olds or are they similar? What age are they relative to the heifers? Or? They are slightly older, they yeah. are early January born. Yeah. Um, they're quite heavy, they're very heavy, they'll be mm. over well, well mm. coming up to 600 kilo bulls, even though they're little. These will actually run in the herd in a couple of weeks. They should be just about big enough, well, next week actually. Two, two stay up and in it, have two teams of five to run in the herd afterwards. Yeah, two will stay behind here now to clear up anything that's left. Yeah, yeah, the pedigree, pedigree Angus. Yeah. How many seasons do they do before you cull? Depends. I, ideally, we'd like to. They're not. They're not the easiest animal to winter. Yeah. Keeping them separate, and uh, we'll try and sell these on as breeding bulls and buy another batch for next year. Okay. Yeah, it's just a hassle. We haven't. 
Yeah. We've been lucky previous years because we've had local buyers that have taken the whole lot each time. So hopefully that stays. Um, yeah, so that's we've not had to put any on the hook in previous years at the moment. So that's why we've kept doing it. Um, yeah. The target weight then for breathing for your maidens? Uh, Ideally. It's well, 290 kg, yeah. and it'll just like, probably, probably over yeah. 300. But when we now. actually serve, we obliterate that. We're in the 320s, 330s, and some. It was a big thing when, when come from my dad, we were always under like 290, and we put big systems in to change that, yeah. mainly from carving. Like, we all carbs are weighed at birth, and they're yeah. weighed again at three weeks when they move to, to, to a different farm, and then obviously they're weighed throughout the life cycle as well. And that's how enabled us to get a better grip and get them that freedom targets like. Um, but the biggest thing we felt out was <laughs> it's hard to get there, but when you have more born in the first two weeks, they generally all hit that breeding target. The ones that didn't hit it were the ones born in week yeah. four, yeah. five, six, seven. Yeah. The youngest in here will be like maybe the third, fourth of March last year. Um, there'll be nothing younger than that, which, which gives them such a much a better start now. And then they, were, they they would have been weaned off corn this time last year, and they won't have seen a bean of concentrate since. First cut silage in the winter housed. So um, they are housed for the first winter, are they? Yeah. yeah. You can't. We have outwintered in the past. Um, it, it's far easier to tra cubicle train them as yearlings than as um, two-year-olds. Yeah. We found. Yeah. It is um, a self feed situation for housing as well very easy system large yards extra cubicles yeah so bed and breakfast sort of job yeah so this is your engine really for your next farm it is keeping extra numbers to yeah, yeah. we to power you on that you're not buying stock for that when that comes on so i think last year the empty rate was with seven percent we got at 11 and a half stock weeks. coming out of our ears really we've sold previous amounts each year I think we kept a couple extra last year just to tidy the herd up, but it's like I said, we're picking with small amount of straws now. Um, where Because there's 133 here, and then at the other farm, there's actually 160 to come in next year. There's even more again, heifers. Um, sort of helps with the stocking rate a little bit as well. Yeah. Because obviously, if we didn't have them all, we'd be just, you'd have to start selling feed or selling P&K off your farm, which we don't really want to do. Yeah. And it's um yeah, it's cash for another farm and obviously, yeah, we're quite fond of this type put a lot of money into genetics into these as we speaking with the herd before. Obviously there is some people we can buy genetics like that, but we feel quite up there as well. Yeah, and you're in control of it. Yeah.